Hi, so thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Gail Bonus. I work at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute with our Climate Center and I manage our coastal resilience programming. Um, so thanks for coming this evening to learn more about how um, we're engaging communities in a coastal flooding citizen science project. And the reasoning or the goals behind this are to address the issues that sea levels are rising and storms are increasing in intensity and frequency and flooding is becoming a much bigger problem in the future. We'll see a lot more of these events. So we really need to plan for this. And how do we plan for it? What kinds of data do we need? And what we're hearing from municipalities is that we really need more local data. So in Maine, with over 4,000 miles of coastline, we only have two tide gauges that have been collecting data on a really long-term scale and only a handful more um, with more recent data in the past several decades. And so there's a lot of unknowns um, around what do uh, local water level impacts look like. And we also need to have engaged citizens. In order for communities to, to, to develop these resilience plans um, in a way that's gonna benefit the whole community in an equitable way, we really need to have everybody engaged and to understand what we're talking about. So we really need to create some common language and some shared knowledge around the issue. So a solution to address that is citizen science. Um, so the Gulf of Maine Research Institute initially worked with the town of Belfast to develop this coastal flooding citizen science project. And we have since expanded it to include several other communities as well as to invite um, folks from anywhere in the Gulf of Maine region to uh, add content to, or to add observations of the coast um, to this project as well. Um, so this evening, I'll be sharing a bit about the website, but I'm also inviting Abby to join um, as she's going to share some about citizen science and how it can be used in communities um, to support kind of problem solving and decision making. All right, so I'm going to pass things over to Abby. Hi there, thanks Gail. Um, as Gail mentioned, my name is Abby Roach and I was asked by Gail to talk a little bit about citizen science and its importance in building community capacities. Um, as some background, I'm currently a PhD candidate at the University of Maine where I study citizen science initiatives, specifically the impacts that such work has on Maine's communities and the ways in which this type of work um, can make change. So first and foremost, what is citizen science and why should the people of Maine care about it? Uh, well, in citizen scientists, scientists are not working in isolation to decide what to study or how it should be studied. Instead, they're working hand in hand with citizens to build data footprints as well as avenues to build community collaboration in response to and for change. Now, it's this hands-on aspect um, that I really want to highlight because it's really important in this type of work um, as it encourages individuals with differing capacities and expertise to contribute to the capability of communities um, in order to adapt and thrive in changing climates. Um, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, and Gail already mentioned it, but with the ever-mounting evidence that extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and severity in our state as a consequence of climate change, is this challenge of building and sustaining the scientific and social capacities of our states affected, mostly coastal communities? So in other words, that there's a need to be able to work together to be prepared and to take action um, in the face of these environmental risk events. And to do so will require specific place-based data and a collaborative spirit between community members, community leaders, and scientific institutions. And this is where citizen science comes in, or the involvement in the scientific process by the public. Um, and in this way, it's research institutions and everyday citizens forming partnerships and together collecting and reporting data. And again, it's important to highlight this togetherness or the partnership component of citizen science um, as research institutions and municipalities collaborate to ask questions, collect data, and put that data to action. And a wonderful example of this type of work is the project that we're here to talk about today. So before I turn it back over to Gail as she provides some specifics related to the project, um, I'm going to put in some chat in the chat some helpful resources um, related to citizen science, specifically citizen science in the state of Maine, um, and some reading resources um, related to citizen science more generally. So Gail, I'll hand it back to you. Great, thank you, Abby. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. All 
All right, can you all see that? Thanks, Abby. All right, so this is the link to the Coastal Flood Citizen Science Project. Um, I'm gonna share with you some screenshots uh, from the website. And if you wanted to follow along in real time, um, please feel free to do so. So that link will bring you right to this page, Coastal Flooding Storms and Sea Level Rise, which introduces the project. But really to get started, we need to create an account. So you'll hit the um, login or register button up here in the upper right and create an account. It's a pretty simple process, really similar to lots of other online accounts that you likely already have, um, username, email, password. Um, and once you enter in that information, uh, you will be brought to the homepage for the Ecosystem Investigation Network, which is a broader citizen science initiative hosted here at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. And really the Ecosystem Investigation Network as a whole is looking to support not just GMRI projects, but community projects or projects coming from other organizations or scientists that are looking to understand how our ecosystems are changing in light of climate impacts. So in, on the project page, you'll see um, several other public projects that you're more than welcome to participate in. There's lots of great ways to get outside and to contribute much needed data um, to support us in understanding our ecosystems. Scroll down and you'll see the coastal flooding, storms, and sea level rise project. Click on that, brings you right back to the homepage, but now we are um, hopefully logged in. So if you scroll down on this page, um, you'll see a bar across the middle. And this is kind of our key navigation bar that you'll use to move between different sections of the website. And the project overview page is really under helping you understand why we're doing this project, kind of what those goals are, which we outlined at the onset of this evening, really wanting to collect that local data um, and also wanting to engage communities in that process because having a photo or kind of evidence of coastal flooding or how our shorelines are being impacted by water level is one thing, but knowing how you all feel about that impact and see that impact in your communities another. So we're looking for not just um, at coastal observations, but we're really wanting to gather your opinions um, and perspectives through this project. Scroll down a bit further. Oh, just one thing to guess to mention here. If you do want to see what different sea level rise scenarios um, do look like in Maine, we do have an interactive website. Um, so you can click on that link and be able to view anywhere along the Maine coastline and see what different sea level rise scenarios uh, look like. Scroll down a little bit further, you can see a list of uh, communities that are participating in this project. Um, so participating communities have contacted GMRI and have kind of shared their need for a project like this and have identified coastal flood monitoring sites um, within their community. So when you click on these links to any of the participating communities, you can learn more about why they're invested in this work, how it supports them in decision making, as well as view those coastal flood monitoring sites. But we also welcome observations from anywhere. And so that's what we're gonna focus on more this evening. So if you click the plus sign to the right of your computer next to anywhere, you can get a little bit more information about um, why it's important for us to be collecting this local data. Again, we don't have uh, a means of kind of monitoring in a hands-off way how water level is impacting our thousands of miles of coastline. So having citizen science out there making these observations is really crucial to this effort. If you pop over to the prep and collect tab, you can learn a little bit more about how we're asking you to collect data. Um, so really simple process. You can actually just head out into the field with your smartphone and um, pull up this website and enter in data using your phone, or you can download one of our data sheets, um, which looks like this, and print that and take it out into the field with you, pen and paper, bring it back home, um, and then upload the data manually afterwards. 
Scroll down a little bit further, you'll see another list of the participating communities. Click the Anywheres tab and you'll get an invitation as to what we're looking for as far as observations go. So you could be kind of opportunistic about this, like, hey, I was strolling along the beach. I took a couple photos because I thought the tide looked funky or I saw something neat that showed evidence of flooding um, and then upload those. Or you could be really intentional. So if there's a place that you frequent or perhaps your own backyard or a favorite beach that you know you're going to regularly, having continual observations at one site over a period of time is also really helpful. Um, so if you make contributions once or many times in one place or many places, um, we definitely welcome all of that. Um, so I'm just going to give you an example of an observation. So this is a photograph I took way back in October. I was walking along the Eastern Prom in Portland. And if you've ever been walking along that walkway, um, this is the East End Beach here. And the East End Beach usually goes halfway down this photograph. And there's lots of rocks that you can kind of sit out on. And I had never seen the tide this high here before. So it really caught my eye. Of course, this is what I do. So it's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm along the coastline. Um, but I took a couple of pictures that day. Um, so I wanted to upload this data to the website. So um, I clicked the contribute tab, contribute tab and let's um, upload some data. So it's automatically going to drop you on a map of Maine. Again, you can upload data from anywhere in the Gulf of Maine region. And then we're going to add in details about the trip. So if I zoom in by double clicking on um, that map, and then I click this little bubble in the upper right hand corner, I can place a dot, a location dot on where I was that day when I took those photos. Or if you scroll down, you'll see that there's an opportunity to put in the longitude and latitude if you'd rather be more specific that way. Um, and then we also want to collect the date that you were out there and getting this date and then later the time is really important because as this project is not just looking to um, get your coastal observations but we're wanting to align those with the weather and water level predicted water level data um, of that day and time so that way we can understand how weather is impacting water level which is then impacting that local um, local location all right so let's add some more data. So I was there um, just afternoon and was I at a monitoring site? So remember I mentioned that the participating communities are at monitoring sites. And um, I know I was in Portland, which is a participating community, but I know that the East End Beach is not one of their monitoring sites. So no, I was somewhere else. Um, if you're curious if you were at a monitoring site, um, I'll show you that map later, but you could also scroll through these tabs to see if you're at one of those locations. What was happening there today? I was just checking it out. I was just walking by. Did I see evidence of flooding or unusually high water? Yep, that's uh, why I stopped and took a picture. And have I seen flooding here before? Personally, I haven't um, seen flooding at the East End Beach like that before. So we're going to upload photos. We do require that you upload two photographs. Um, you can choose though up to four. Um, so there's the three photos that I took that day along the trail, the East End Trail. And then we want to gather some information about what is, how is this observation impacting you? How is it impacting your community? And how concerned are you about what you saw that day? So um, did this, how did this event impact you? Um, could you get where you wanted to go? Yep, I could. Did it flood my property? Nope. Did it flood a place that I care about? Mm, I'm not there very often. Um, so no, nope, it wasn't flooding a place that really impacted me. So no, this did not impact me. Um, what was being flooded there today? So um, you've got a couple of different selections underneath this tab that go from, was it, um, Flooding a place that has cultural historical significance? Was it flooding infrastructure or roadways, private property, public property? And in this case, I chose environmental because it flooded all the way up um, the beach. So a natural coastal landscape. And my level of concern, if this happened frequently, it would be a problem. The East End Beach is um, a place that a lot of people go to and it would definitely be a problem if it flooded really frequently, especially if it splashed over onto the trail during a storm, perhaps. So once you've entered in all your data, um, we just ask that you kind of give it a 
uh, mental double check, make sure that you follow the protocols. And if you feel confident about what you entered, click the yes button and click submit. And it will take you to the view data tab. So this gives you all of the data um, that has ever been contributed throughout this project. So it's going to be throughout the main coastline right now. We're really excited to be expanding elsewhere in the near future too. So if you want to find your data, you're going to have to use some of these filters. So I know I entered in data. I remember it was like October 3rd of 2020. So it's not going to show up at the top because this is like being filtered by date. So a couple of different choices, you could um, select dates to choose by, um, or you could filter based off of location or level of concern. So I filtered based off of where I was at, which was somewhere else, and how we have that kind of labeled. It wasn't a coastal flood monitoring site. And there's been a couple of these, so scroll down a little bit and you can see the observation that I just posted. Click on that um, and then you can see your data. Um, so what we do with this data, is that we'll use this um, in the participating communities. Uh, those municipalities are really looking closely at this data to inform their decision-making. But we're also using this as an outreach effort. Like I said, we can't make coastal resilience decisions without us being aware of the issue. And I say us, I mean everyone. Um, so in order to really get engaged, let's get out there and, and see what's happening during these high tide events. And we really invite those observations to happen from everywhere. Plus, we're also looking to invite uh, future communities to the project. So if you are in a community that's not participating but think they should, please have them reach out. We would love to work with them to get them on board. Um, and then having this baseline data, of course, is just really helpful um, across the state because it is going to have to be not just a townwide effort, but a regionwide effort and a statewide effort um, in order to develop these coastal resilience plans and to have those actions. Um, so I wanted to show you this as well because I did mention the coastal flood monitoring sites. We welcome you to upload data to any of these sites if you're if any, in any of our participating communities. Right now, Belfast, Portland, and South Portland are the communities that we're working with. Um, Vinyl Haven will be joining this summer. And as I said, we welcome many more. Um, so you could just click on the community you're interested in, zoom in to see their coastal flood monitoring sites click one of those pictures or one of the tabs, and then you would get more information about that location. Um, so this week is our kind of pilot launch for the project, and we're really excited to be seeing this data coming in. We've had some really great success in Belfast, so we're excited to see what Portland and South Portland, and of course, wherever you may be, um, to upload and share some data. Um, so that way we can really better understand how our coastlines are being impacted by flooding. All right, so I'm just going to stop share for a second. And I just really want to thank you for uh, joining us this evening. Um, and we really hope that you do find this project engaging and participate in the project. And like I said, whether that's one observation or many of these observations, and we invite you to check out your local tide gauges and pay attention to those weather reports um, and share your flood observations um, or evidence of flooding or really whatever that water level is because um, we can line up that water level data with the weather conditions and really get some great understanding from that. Um, and all this work is really supporting what the state of Maine um, is currently trying to do through the Maine Climate Action Plan and Maine Won't Wait document to really understand um, our coastlines and the impacts that they are going to be experiencing as sea levels rise and we see more of these intense and frequent storms. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, and I'd be happy to chat.